So now let's talk about configuring a DHCP server. Now the one that I've got installed on this system is the Berkeley Internet name daemon or bind. And the way we would install it would be with the command apt install bind9. Now I've already got that set. So I'm not actually going to run it at the moment because I already have it installed. Now you can configure this a couple of different ways. You can configure it as a caching server only or as a server that's going to serve names for a specific domain. The idea of having a caching server only is that if you had one in your network and all of your devices are using that one as their primary uh, name server, then it's going to speed up subsequent requests. So if client one requests ubuntu.com, then it would retrieve enough client two or request the same thing soon enough after we've requested it from client one. It'll just serve it from its local cache rather than going out to the um, internet to find the name again. So it can speed up your access a little bit. Honestly, I don't notice a huge impact in it, but under a large enough load, you might actually be able to feel the impact of it and it might speed up your network. Now, I've already got it installed. I want to take a look and show you our configuration files and then show you how to verify it. So the install part you should be comfortable with, right? Just apt install by nine. Make sure you update your um, repositories first if you haven't done that recently. Okay, so our configuration files are an etc bind. And here you'll see our configurations. We've got a bunch of them. So I want to walk you through some of these. I want to start with up here, you see some DB ones. So these are kind of example files that we can use. So I'm going to show you, let's cat db.local. And this will give us a sample database or a sample file for a loopback interface. Now, what I did is I took this and I copied it to create my new file and then I updated it. But let's come back to that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's start with our name.d can uh, or name d dot config files. So I'm gonna nano name d dot c o n f and you'll notice we've got a bunch of config files here i want you to see how this is kind of broken up because this is a little funky so in the name d c o n f file so this is a primary config file and it only does three things it includes three other files so the config dot options config dot local and config dot default zones so that's actually where we're going to do our configuration so I'm going to exit out and let's do the same thing for config.options. Now this is going to be our server options. And here I've set a couple of different things. I've set this listen on any, which basically means listen to it from any or any um, IP address on your system. So you know, let's say you had, you know, three interfaces in the system with three different IP addresses and you only wanted this to function as a DNS server on one of them, you would use listen on and then you'd put that IP address. Now your forwarders, I went ahead and identified Google's DNS servers. So what this will do is if this gets a request for something that it doesn't know, it will forward that to the Google DNS servers. Now you could alternatively forward it to your ISP's DNS servers or something like that. But this will forward those messages on. And if all you're doing is a caching DNS server, at this point, you're done, right? Once you set the forwarders, you tell what to listen, you're basically done. And everything works fine. And you shouldn't have any issues. Now, if you want this to manage a forward lookup zone, though, that's where this gets a little more entertaining. So I'm going to exit out of here. And let's do our ls dash l again and if we're going to set up our own zones then we're going to come to this name name d dot config dot local so i'm going to nano name d dot c o n f dot local this actually doesn't hold the file our zone files are going to be in separate files 
So this is where you define the zone. You tell it which type. So this is zone basset 311.local. The type is going to be a master. So you can set up slaves and things like that. But this is just going to be a single master server. And then we specify the file and we'll specify the full path to the file name. And since this is a basset 311.local, I named my file net.basset311.local. Technically, by the way, the zone name doesn't have to match the file name, but just to simplify your life, make a match. Okay, let's take a look at that file. Now, let me show you real quick. Let me clear here. So back to where I started out when I was jumping ahead of myself. Let's cat db.local. So what I did is I took this file and I copied it to net.basset.local. And here's what we ended up with. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in an editor. Net.basset.local. Let me type in the right file name. Nano net dot basset three eleven dot local. Okay, and here's where we see what we've changed here. So my TTL is time to live for things that have cached. So here is where I set my start of authority. And this is going to be the start of authority for basset311.local. And you'll notice next to that is root.basset311.local. That's actually the email address of the person responsible for the basset311.local domain. Now you'll notice it doesn't have an at, it has a dot. That's just a little idiosyncrasy here. So SOA, start of authority, basset311.local. This is the primary server for basset311.local. Now these next several lines are the serial number and then refresh, retry, expire. This is for zone transfers to secondary servers. Now I want to point out something important on that serial number. It doesn't matter what that serial number is, but what matters is that every time you make a change, you increment that serial number. If you don't, it just has to go higher. Doesn't matter which, I mean, some people will use year, month, day, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for variations on a single day. Some people will just use a straight number. It doesn't matter. But what's important is that every time you change this file, you increment that number. Because if you don't, when it goes to reload the file, when your uh, bind nine named daemon goes to reload the file, I will look at the cache serial number, and if it sees the same serial number, it'll skip the file. Which means I can make 100 changes in here, and if I don't increment that serial number, the name daemon will ignore it. Once I increment that serial number, then it looks at the file, says this is serial 7, I have serial 6. Oh, hey, this new one is more information, I should load that. And so it loads it. Okay, once we get down to that, these two little at signs identify basically this device. So just basset311.local name server is going to resolve to 10.1.1.11. And then here's where I start putting in a different types uh, or different names. So I've got test, I've got file, mail server, web, and web01. And you'll see, let's start with the uh, test since this is this local machine. It's, it's an A record. So that's why it has that capital A there. And then it has the IP address of that uh, record. So test should resolve to 10.1.1.11. File is another A record that should resolve to 10.1.1.11. Mail SRV is an A record that should resolve to 10.1.1.12. Now here, this next one, mail is a C name. So it's basically an alias. So if I do a search for mail, it resolves will resolve to mailserve.basset311.local, which will then look up mailserve.basset311.local, which resolve to 10.1.1.12. Okay. Now, you can go deeper with lots of different types of records and tons of records and lots of things. Now, I do want to draw one distinction between this and a um, Windows server. This DNS server does not automatically update. So computers will not automatically register their names with it, which means you're going to have to add them manually if you're using this. If you are doing something web-based, so publicly accessible, that's what you want anyway, so that's not a big deal. If you're doing it lo for local registration or local name resolution, then you might want to think about that.
Okay, so that's all of our configuration files. Let me go ahead and LSL again, and we'll look at these real quick. So the default or the base configuration name.conf, we have our options gives us our DNS server options, our local gives us our local uh, zones that we're resolving. We put our local zones in separate files, and then we have a link to default zones as well. Now, when all of this is done, I should be able to check my status of my name D and it should say active and running. And you're going to see a bunch of unresolves here. That's okay. It's trying to, it's actually trying to hit an NTP server. And at the moment, I don't have internet access to this device because I've got it isolated. Um, go ahead and quit out of here. But we should see that it's up and running. Now, how do I test it? Let me give you a couple of tools. So first is going to be dig. So I'm going to specify the server that I'm trying to dig at 10.1.1.11, which is my local server. And I want to dig for, oh, let's do, let's do file.basset311.local. And it hits that and it determines here in my answer section, basset311.local, it's an A record with an address of 10.1.1.11. And I can tell when I pull or what server I pulled it from and when. Now, just as something to be aware of, sometimes if I try to dig without specifying, I'll sometimes run into errors. Sometimes, so right here, I had a server failure and it was trying to access server 127.0.0. And I had this thing listening on any, but for some reason it's not picking it up on 127.0.0.1. I'm not too worried about that because my clients are going to be hitting it from Bassett or from 10.1.1.11. So let me do another one here. So this was what I just did. Oh, I just did file twice. So let me do this. Let me dig at 10.1.1.11. So specify the IP address I want to connect to the server on. And I want to look for mail.basset311.local. And this comes back here in my answer section. Remember, we said there was a C name that would have to resolve to an A record. Right here, we see that mail.basset311.local is a C name, reserved to mail, resolved to mail serve, which resolves to 10.1.1.12. Now, dig is great for doing one-offs. So I type in the whole command and what I want, and it goes and finds it. Now, the other tool that I can use is NSLOOKUP. And I have a similar thing here. So if I do a server, it goes to 127.0.0.53. I want to change that to server 10.1.1.11. Now, I should be able to look up, oh, let's do web webzero1.basset. 311.local and that resolves to 10.1.1.13. Okay, perfect. Just for kicks, mail.basset311.local. And here we'll see that C name resolving to a name resolving to an address. Okay, so that takes you through the basic config files and how to test a DNS server.